गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग फ्रॉम विचुअल लोकेशन यू आर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो और वेर एवर यू आर हियरिंग मी फ्रॉम राइट इन दिस वीडियो आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक और आई विल से आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस यू नो बिकॉज आई फील दैट इन यूट्यूब इट इज नॉट ओनली मी मी टॉकिंग राइट इट इज ऑल्सो यू ट्राइंग टू पुट योर पॉइंट्स एंड आई कैन लर्न फ्रॉम दोज कॉमेंट्स एंड पॉइंट्स रिमेंबर आई रीड ऑल द कॉमेंट्स सो इफ यू आर पुटिंग अ कॉमेंट आउट दैर आई डू रीड इट मस्ट बी I only respond to those comments where I feel that I am connected, but definitely we read all the comments. Right? Personally, I read all the comments. So, in this topic, you know what I want to discuss is in this video what I want to discuss is translating the DDT thought process, the domain-driven design thought process into code. The struggle of translating, or the complexity of translating, or the uh, the barriers of translating you know the ddd thought process into code right what do i mean by that so yesterday you know i was taking a training on questpond right we had this microservices training we have regular trainings out there uh, please go and visit uh, the links you know down below in the comment section so when i was taking that training right and i said that yes uh, we have this ddd out here the domain driven design so basically we have the domain from the domain we have the sub domains and then in the sub domain we have a bounded context and the bounded context we follow ubiquitous language we do the modeling then we have a context map on the top of it and from context map we say that okay now we jump into the tactical ddd where we go and we uh, talk about you know the different classes so when i was talking about these classes right so we have three kinds of classes in ddd one is the entity class another one is a value object and the last one is the services right and when i started defining the entity i said that entity means you know object with unique identity over time and space and in that this unique identity is regardless of the attribute values please understand so the definition of entity which is given in ddd out here uh, is that entity objects have a unique identity right over time and uh it is regardless of their attribute values right now when i when i said this definition uh, definition out here right i said okay this is the definition right but how does it then come into c sharp right so when i'm creating a class here will i be again following the same traditional class approach object oriented approach right how does it go right so let me talk about it so let me go back to the screen and this is the definition and let's talk about you know that translation of this definition into code right how does it happen so let us go to the screen out here you can see on my screen we have a customer class out here like so here is the definition right of entity think about it what we are trying to do is that we are trying to map the domain driven design concept into code see if you are reading any book of ddd and i would recommend to read eric evans book it is directly from the horse's mouth right you will only see theory and theory in the book right you won't see any code and there shouldn't be any code right but later on definitely you know you say that now this concept we have to translate into code right that's where the challenge is right so you look at the entity definition out here it says that object has a unique identity over time so there is a unique identity over time and it is regardless of the attribute values means what right means that for example look at look over here you can see that we have a customer class out here it has an id it has a name it has a country right and uh, i have created two instances of this customer class that is c1 and c2 right Uh, so you can see that here uh, we have an id 1001 here also we have an id 1001 here we have name shiv india and here we have name shiva and india but now remember that when i but you know these two objects these two objects right if it is an entity and customer is an entity actually right customer is an entity right because it's something which is real thing out there in the real world right so it says that yes you should be able to uniquely identify that customer object over time and space right but you shouldn't be thinking about the attribute values means you should not think about that this name is shiv or it is shiva or it is india or what right you if the ids right if that identifier it can be id it can be a unique identifier whatever it is right those are same right then these objects have to be equal so over here when i go ahead and when i say that now compare uh, let's say c1 dot equals with c2 i should actually get it equal please understand it why because the ids are same right but now what really happens is right so now what really happens is when this equals comparison is done it is actually by reference it is a it is a technical reference internally right 
If you know what I'm talking about by ref, please write down out here, right? So what happens is when I run this program out here, uh, I see the value as false, which is obvious because objects are compared in a programming language by reference. So you can see it is showing as false. Now that goes against the microservices definition or the DDD definition. Remember, DDD is different and microservices is different, right? It goes against the definition where we say that object with unique identity and the identity is ID. If they are same, right, then the object should actually go and show it as same, right? But it is not showing it as same, right? So what you do now is that, now that's where the challenge is. I want that this equal should be same. So what you do now here is that you go ahead and you say override this equal method, right? So I'll say that, okay, override this equal method and say that, oh, when you are comparing this, right, make sure that you compare by using the ID. So I'll say that this dot ID should be equal to the customer's obj dot ID. If that is there, then it is cool, right? So this ID, okay. If this is there, then it is true. So don't do a reference comparison but I'm giving you a logic of comparison, right? So now with this, what happens is, uh, if I run this, I should get it as true, right? So that is a challenge. So what I'm trying to say is that when you're looking at the at DDD and when you're looking at the definitions out there, when you're looking at the theory out there, and when you think about translating that theory into your .NET code, a deep understanding of .NET is important, okay? Um, uh, for example, now, the same example when you're talking about value objects, right? If you look at value objects, in case of value objects, there is no unique identity. It is immutable, right? Um, and there, the property values are important, right? In case of value objects, what happens is it is the, the equality is based on the property. 100 rupees is equal to 100 rupees. So even if I create two objects out there, even if their identity is different, well, they shouldn't have any identity, right? Uh, in this case, again, what happens is, again, you have to think about it. Okay, so if I create a value object in .NET, how do I respect what the DDD is talking, right? Uh, and also, it actually exaggerates the problem. You know, exaggerates means, it. Uh, you know, if, uh, if you think about it, for example, let me go back again to the code. So uh, here again, you have to start thinking from all the angles. Because if you see developers, right, developers say, okay, like I can compare like this. And how about I can also go and compare like this? Why not? They can also use equal to equal to, right? So in this case, what happens is you will suddenly find, you know, there is a discrepancy. If the developers are using the dot equals, it is respecting the entity definition. But if he's using equal to equal to, it is not reference. It is not respecting the entity definition out here, right? Uh, so again, what to do with this, right? So I'll just give an answer out here. What we have to do out here is that we have to use the operator overloading, right? So, uh, you know, what I want to say here is that, you know, when you're learning microservices, when you're learning microservices, right? One is very important is to understand the concept, right? The, the strategical part of it, domain, subdomain, where it is more planning, more thinking, right? But the challenge comes, you know, when you actually switch, you know, from the strategical approach to tactical, the time it happens, right, you need to be very, very careful about that those definitions get translated into actual code and they look meaningful and they look authentic, right? It is not just you create an object and it's done. No, it has, if you are saying it is an entity object, it should respect the definition of DDD, right? Uh, so you can see like yesterday, you know, that was a wonderful training, you know, where we talked about uh, implementing Shisha with value objects and services. Uh, then I talk about that that how the reference you, reference equality is a problem. And then we talked about this love triangle, you know, that, that equals should also be there. Equal to equal to should also be there. Get hash code also should match, right? And uh, the immutability and collision problem and so on, right? So my whole goal of this video is to make you aware that translating the DDD concept into code needs a very good understanding of .NET, also very good understanding of microservices and then only that translation becomes very seamless. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video and I hope that uh, you like this video, right? Uh, do, do put down in the comments down below that what do you think? What are the big pain points of translating uh, the microservices strategy, right? 
uh, strategy patterns into code, right? What is the biggest problem? What you what you what you think is right? Uh, and just in case if you're new to microservices, you don't have to worry, right? Please see the video down below in the link where I've explained. Uh, I've given a one-hour video of microservices. And yes, you know, if you want to really attend my trainings, you can always attend my trainings where we go very in depth uh, into the code as well, which happens every Saturday and Sunday. So happy learning, happy job hunting. Thank you.